Watermark Bindery is a small manufacturer of high-quality hand-bound notebooks, journals, and photo albums. In this series of videos, we will show you how we make our books. Please visit us at www.watermarkbindery.com. Part 1. The making of the cover. We're now making a watermark cover. We begin by putting two boards down. And we take this fine cloth and put glue on it. A laminated spine cloth. This is the first step. I need to pull up a little bit centered. I have enough edge on the other side. Maybe coming back down a little bit more. That should be good. There we go. There's two boards are now connected. We take the hook, flip it over, and as the next step, put a spine in. The spine is centered between the two boards, and we use a little temp spacer to make sure that they're just right and in the middle. Yeah, that looks about good. great. Use our spatula to fold over the edges. It doesn't have to be very, very uh, straight. It's okay. This will all be covered up. Okay. Now we'll just lift it up. Pinch the edges, make sure that they're really nice and tight. And flip it over. And the next step is to take our bone folder and score this. And we're very careful so we don't have the bone folder slip out. It'll leave marks on the cloth and the book would be ruined. So I'm very, very careful. This is what it looks like right now. We can slide our template over a little bit. Make sure it's not sticking. Here's our glue pad. Put the sheet on. Always make sure that there isn't any, anything that's on the template that gets included. Now we take the MLA paper. Which is a very thin unroll use. Make sure we have the right side. We always glue down the rough side. We leave the, the edge here. That's how our side we see it makes for a nice rugged handmade look. And we put some glue on it. Be very careful, this paper is very, very thin. So we don't want to overdo it. A little bit here. Lift it up, go over to our template. I have some markers on the template that shows me where to lay it down. That makes sure that there's some consistency and, and the books come out the way we designed them. There we go. Now I'm going to lay it down. I want to get some of the folds. Freaks out, here we go. Now I just take this edge and very subtly take my thumb and, and fan that out so that makes this very nice look. Okay, this is the underlying paper. And now comes the overlay, which is a red. It'll look like this. Lay it down. Glue it up. Here again. The torn edge goes towards the center of the book, so if this is visible. Let me take a little bit of freedom in determining the gap. It's based on the tear and just what looks best. 
colors. I think it's pretty nice. I'll come out a little bit. Okay. Here we go. I keep a towel on my lap to just make sure the glue can be wiped off. I'm going to come out with this a little bit. Yeah, this looks good. I might, I might just trim this off. It's a little bit too wild. There we go. Okay. All done with my laminating. Okay. The next step, I will now take this, lift it up, and you know, make sure that I wiped off any glue so there isn't anything sticky. And I cut the corners. So when we turn in the edges, we make for nice solid corners. Now we just take our spatula and turn in the edges. Same here. Now we just Pinch the corners here and do the same on the side of the book. I just bring it up a little bit, make sure. Okay. Usually I take up my Teflon folder and then I take my bone folder and go along the edges, make sure it is tight. Oh, now we go to the other side. Let's look at the process in close-up on another book that I made today. This sheet underneath is an underlay, which I'm going to glue up right now. I got the glue on it, and we position this piece on our template, along with the pre-marked lines, lay it down, get the kinks out, and then I like to fan it out like this, just so it looks it looks so much better this way. Now I take the cover sheet, which is the purple. It will look like this. Glue up the rough side, and of course, the torn edge goes to the center of the book. Again, apply glue to it, and and that's one of the more <clears throat> tricky things because it needs to be done very carefully with this with this thin paper, and this is what look, the glue side looks like. And now I lay it down, give it a little, see this comes out, so I will probably just give it a little bit of a angle. Now it's more critical to make sure this is, this is clean, because this is a cover sheet. Now we're ready to glue up the other side. Once again, we have to decide the two torn edges. We have to decide which one to take. I think I'm going to take this one. It's got an interesting sort of tear that matches. So I'll use that. And apply our glue. We use a PVA glue, which is a bookbinder glue, a cold glue, very similar to wood glue. It's white and it dries clear. It's been a very good glue for us. It allows a little bit of wiggle room. It doesn't set immediately, um, but once it sets, it's done. It very, makes a very strong book and a strong bond. Okay. Yeah, I think this will work. There. 
Oh, it's very pretty with that leaf showing. And then we have the... Okay, I'll just lift this up. Look at that. King's out. There we go. Okay, that's before. Let me just grab the other. And here again, the two... Two torn edges. I have to decide which one. It's nice to have two torn edges. I think I'm going to go for this one. And just probably set it up pretty close. It's almost overlapping here. Um, well, I should make it a pretty nice book. No book is the same, and that means that not every book is liked by everyone. That's why we make different types and try to have them come out individually is very nice but still different so when people choose them on a the shelf they, they have a little bit of variety but every book we make is something we would we are proud of and we like to have people use and be happy with okay I think this looks pretty good so let's push it out again use my finger and then I'd use the ruler very carefully. There we go. I think that makes a nice book. So. All right. And here we go. And we have this. Pretty torn edge, I and mean, if you look here, that's uh, that's quite a bit of variation. So we're going to have to play a little bit with this. I'm going to go and actually give it an angle, so it doesn't really look like it's coming back because we don't want it to come back beyond the edge of the spine cloth. So I'm going to make it give it a little angle, and that's that won't really be visible, but um, it makes it so that it's a little bit more straightforward and a little less wild and more importantly it doesn't expose any of the um, board that hasn't been covered by the spine cloth so this is this is a little bit more tricky because I have to make sure I don't steal too much from my edge hmm. I think this looks pretty handsome have to come out a little bit more here is my the part that is at least covered. So as you can see, this book is a pretty exciting book. This has a lot of character. See, I brought this out, I fanned it out, and when we look in the back, you can see how crooked it is, but that doesn't really matter because we just need enough coverage, so when we case in the book and we put in the book block, there isn't any board showing. Again, I turn the edges off, and my book sideways, use my spatula to turn in the edges. There's enough room, see that? But it's, you can tell how it was applied in a, in a less than straight fashion. And that's on purpose, and that's the reason my other books really cannot be made by a machine. A machine really wouldn't have that ability to decide. Based on how the paper is torn, how to make this book. This is our book. And I think it came out pretty nicely. This is what it looks like on the inside. And I am pretty happy with it.